हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू केमिस्ट्री क्लास सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ आइडियल सॉल्यूशंस नॉन आइडियल सॉल्यूशंस एंड एजियोट्रोपिक मिक्सचर्स विद एग्जांपल्स सो इन टुडे सेशन वी स्टार्ट द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ सॉल्यूशन दैट इज कोलिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टी टेक द सेड अगेन कोलिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज a binary solutions which containing a non volatile non electrolyte solute non volatile non electrolyte solute particularly if dilute solutions we are consider so the dilute solutions which having a characteristic properties which depends only on the number of solute particles but not on the nature of solute irrespective of the its nature the some of the properties of those dilute solutions which depends particularly on the number of solute particles those properties are known as colligative properties so colligative properties is nothing but what the properties whose values depends only on the number of solute particles not on the nature only on number so here a simple definition for this colligative property its definition is definition the properties of a solution which depends on the properties of the solution the properties the properties of the solution the properties of the solution whose value is the properties of the solution which depends which depends which depends only on the number of number of solute particles solute particles which may be ions or molecules but not on the but not on its nature irrespective of its nature it depends only on only on the number of solute particles number of solute particles which depends only on the number of solute particles are known as colligative properties <coughs> definition is clear the properties of the solution whose values depends only on the number of solute particles how many solute particles are there but irrespective of its nature however uh, what about the solutions if it is present irrespective of its nature irrespective of its nature it depends only on the number of solute particles those properties are called as colligative properties now we are dealing some of the colligative properties in that the first one is in that the first one first one is a relative lowering in a relative a lowering relative lowering in vapor pressure vapor pressure r l v p relative lowering in vapor pressure the second one is elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point delta t b delta t b third one is depression in depression in freezing point freezing point delta pf and the fourth one is osmotic osmotic pressure osmotic pressure that is pi these are the four colligative properties we are going to deal in this lesson first one is A relative lowering in vapor pressure that is RLVP represented by RLVP. Second one, 
elevation in boiling point, third depression in freezing point, and the last one is osmotic pressure. So now in these in these four qualitative properties, particularly we need to calculate the molar mass of solute. So here we get four formula. So calculate particular questions. Calculate. So in this case, calculate, calculate the molar mass of calculate the molar mass of solute. Calculate the molar mass of solute. M subscript B. That is equals to question mark. So here calculate the molar mass of solute by using these colligative properties. Ah, by knowing the other factors, we can calculate the colligative properties also. So what is meant by colligative properties? The properties whose values are which particular the properties which depends upon only the number of particles, the molar concentration of solutions. Molar concentration of solution, one mole, two mole, three moles, etc. Irrespective of its nature, one mole of X, whatever the X, it may be any electrolyte, any non electrolyte, it depends only on the number of solute particles. If particularly if you are considering the electrolyte, then number of ions. So we need to no, if the number of solute particles is the same, then its colligative properties are also same. <clears throat> now let us start with the first colligative property that is the relative lowering in vapor pressure. Relative lowering in vapor pressure. Let us recall the concept of vapor pressure. What is meant by vapor pressure? Vapor pressure of a solvent vapor pressure of solutions. So let us recall those concepts. What is meant by vapor pressure? So just recall the first one RLVP RLVP relative lowering in vapor pressure. So what is meant by vapor pressure? The pressure exerted by the vapors on the liquid surface which is in equilibrium with the liquid at a given temperature at a constant temperature. Now let us consider the same concept. Let us recall. So here first I have taken a beaker in this a closed vessel. In this I have taken solvent molecules, pure solvent molecules are there. When it is heated, when it is heated what happens? These liquid molecules are undergoing evaporation. It undergoing evaporations and some part of this liquid will be converted into vapors and it is collected over the available space. So these are the vapors. The pressure exerted by this vapor is known as vapor pressure. So let us take a solvent molecules. Solvent. Solvent is represented by the component. Yeah, solvent component. Only pure solvent. So this pressure exerted is known as Pa. Since it is pure solvent, so I can write P naught A. This is Sol uh, solvent only. Now, to this solvent, if you are adding some solute particles, what happens? So, to this solvent, you are adding some amount of solid, that is, solute part, non volatile solute, particularly non volatile solute is added. Now, I am taking a solution. This is the solution. So, it is the solution. When this is heated, what happens? So here, solution means it containing both solute as well as solute plus solvent. So it containing solute plus solvent. Solvent is A, solute is represented by the term B. R, we can represent it by 1 and solute is by 2. A, R, 2. A, R, 1. B, R, 2. So you can represent solvent either by subscript A or by subscript 1. Now, when it is heated, what happens? Solute is non volatile because we are considering a solution containing non volatile solute. So it is non volatile. So it cannot produce vapors. So in vapor phase, only the solvent molecules, only the solvent molecules, the component A which vaporizes, now it contains. 
the total pressure of the solutions is equals to pressure due to the solvent molecules only in solution in solution the vapor pressure is exerted by only solvent molecules now you know that among the solvent and solution which one having highest vapor pressure solvent or solution definitely solution because when you are adding some solute so solute particles occupies some of the available surface area so as a result the escaping tendency of liquid decreases hence vapor pressure will be decreased vapor pressure is decreased now this is the solution vapor pressure p vapor pressure of solution so, so let us represent this by p s solution now how much vapor pressure is reduced so initially let's assume that p not a be the vapor pressure of pure solvent a now i am adding one spoon of solute sugar or salt one spoon then vapor pressure is decreased by some factor suppose if i am adding 10 spoon of sugar then vapor product uh, vapor pressure further it is reduced so the difference the amount of vapor pressure the quantity of solute added and decrease in the vapor pressure both are related with each other so how it is related so here the decrease in the vapor pressure is depends upon the amount of solute added amount of solute that is concentration of solute added so the decrease in the vapor pressure is depends upon the concentration of solute added let us consider how much vapor pressure is decrease delta p lowering in vapor pressure something vapor pressure is lowered so lowering in vapor pressure so this is nothing but vapor pressure of pure solvent minus vapor pressure of solution so vapor pressure of solution is nothing but water so this vapor pressure of solution is due to the vapor pressure of sol solvent molecules only because solvent is non volatile so this is the equation p not minus p particular property p not minus p now according to according to the raoult's law statement so this p not a i have written as it is minus in place of p a p a is equals to p not a my p not a into x a raoult's law statement partial pressure of any component is directly proportional to its mole fraction So now we are at P not A is common. So P not A one minus X A, where X A be the mole fraction of solvent, mole fraction of solvent. One minus X A can be written as X B P not A, and this in this place I can write it is X P. This is delta P. So delta p divided by p not of a or simply can write p not this is equals to xb note this expression so this is the relative lowering vapor pressure so in place of delta p can we write delta p is nothing but what p not that is pure solvent minus p p not minus p by p not simply have written p not means pure component minus vapor pressure of the solution divided by vapor pressure of pure component that is equals to x v so this is the expression for a relative lowering in vapor pressure so in this case so this difference is known as this difference is known as lowering in vapor pressure just it is lowering in a lowering of vapor pressure delta p is nothing but it is a lowering of vapor pressure and this is not a colligative property lowering in vapor pressure is not a colligative property but the relative lowering with respect to this p not this is this term is known as relative lowering of vapor pressure and this is a colligative property because it depends upon 
the mole fraction of solute it depends upon the molar concentration of solute only irrespective of its nature so therefore the complete relative lowering in vapor pressure is a colligative property but lowering in vapor pressure is not a colligative property please note this lowering in vapor pressure is not a colligative property whereas the relative lowering in vapor pressure is a colligative property because the rlvp this value is depends upon the mole fraction <coughs> is it clear yes note this so this is the concept of relative lowering in vapor pressure so since this rlvp its value is depends upon the mole fraction of solute therefore it is called as or it is said to be a colligative property now how to determine how to calculate the molar mass of solute molar mass of solute how to calculate by using rlpp rlvp let us explain this calculation of molar mass calculation of molar mass rlvp delta p by p not is equals to xp this is the expression right okay this is the expression now as we know that as we know that what is meant by xb xb is nothing but what xb is equals to it is the number of moles of solute divided by total number of moles that is any plus nb mole fraction formula we already know that mole fraction formula nb divided by na plus nb can we substitute that here in place of xb we can write in place of xb i am writing its formula so therefore this can be written as number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of solvent plus number of moles of solute now for a dilute solution if it is considered for dilute solution what is meant by dilute solution concentration of solute is very less as compared to the solvent so for a dilute solution the number of moles of b is very very less as compared to the number of moles of a therefore in the denominator term we can neglect this nb number of moles can be neglected in the denominator term so therefore this our expressions gives p delta p by p not is equals to nb divided by na nb divided by na what is meant by this nb and na where this nb number of moles of solute is nothing but it is given mass of solute divided by molar mass of solute capital m subscript b w subscript b b represents solute similarly number of moles of a can be written as given mass of a divided by molar mass of a now let us substitute those terms by definitions we can write by definition so delta p divided by p not is equals to in place of nb wb divided by mb divided by i am writing reverse na is nothing but wa divided by m a written reverse so this is the formula of rlvp and this formula is used to calculate the molar mass of solute or you can rearrange molar mass of solute is equals to mb is equals to you can rearrange so mb is equals to wb into m a divided by mb is equals to i have just rearranged these terms so wb m a divided by divided by wb a or divided by delta p by p not delta p by p not so mb can be calculated by this expression so this is the formula number 1 formula number 1 to calculate mb mb is equals to wb by wb ma divided by wa into delta p by p not first solve this term and then 
for the simplification situation. So to calculate m. So this is the formula which we are used to calculate the molar mass of solute by using a relative lowering in vapor pressure. A relative lowering in vapor pressure. Is it clear? Okay, right. Now in the next video we will discuss some of the numericals which are related to the lowering relative lowering in vapor pressure with respect to this formula that is on RLVP we will discuss some of the numericals in the next video okay please note this formula this is first one first colligative property so after discussing the numerical we will go for second colligative property elevation in boiling point so from now onwards so on each colligative properties at least 20 to 30 questions you need to solve on each colligative property. This is the first colligative property. And the numericals is related to these terms only. So vapor pressure of solution, vapor pressure of solvent, vapor pressure of solvent, vapor pressure of solutions, Hb that is number of moles, even mass or number of moles will be given, substitution, simplifications will be there. So let's see some of the problems in the next video. Okay, thank you.